We're now roughly halfway between the summer solstice and the 21st of June, and the autumn equinox on the 23rd of September. As every year in August, this is the time when we see a lot of shooting stars. At this point of its orbit, the Earth passes through the debris left in the wake of a comet. When the Earth hurtles through this cloud of dust made up of tiny grains, only a few milligrams in weight, they heat up and flame on contact with our atmosphere, giving us a fiery display of shooting stars. This is the debris the swift Tuttle comet left behind. The comet travels out past Pluto and returns every 130 years, crossing the Earth's orbit just where we pass every August. The Earth speeds through the comet dust like a car through snowflakes. To see them, we have to look forward. But which way is forward? The Earth turns on its axis, so where's the front? Look in the direction the Earth is traveling. Always keep the sun on your left. At midnight, when you look south, you have the sun behind you. To put it on your left, turn left towards the east. That's it. Now you're looking forward in the direction of the comet dust. Around midnight, the shooting stars should appear three hands above the horizon. Since the Earth turns as the night goes on, you have to look more and more to the southeast. And the point where the shooting stars are coming from will rise in the sky. You'll see them best in the small hours because then you'll be looking directly towards the radiant, the point where the shooting stars come from. Other comets pass farther away from the Earth, like the famous Halley's Comet, which returns every 76 years. The Hale-Bopp Comet that passed close to the Sun in March 1997 takes thousands of years to come back. Perhaps it visited us before, 3,000 years ago. We'll know in 3,000 years' time, if it returns. But sometimes comets get caught, like the famous little Schumacher levy, which passed too close to Jupiter in 1994. It was captured by Jupiter's tremendous pull and began circling the gas giant on an orbit which brought it closer and closer. The tug of gravitational forces finally tore the comet's core apart. An orbit later, the fragments crashed down one by one into Jupiter's thick atmosphere. And what about us on Earth? Might we be involved in a crash like that? It's highly unlikely. Still, the next time it returns, Swift-Tuttle will pass very close to us. When Swift-Tuttle appeared in the 19th century, astronomers calculated and predicted its return for 1984. But comets are unreliable. Heated up by the sun, they throw off steams of gas and dust. This changes their path and the exact moment of their return. Swift-Tuttle came back eight years late, in November 1992. It crossed our path while we were here, a long way from its trajectory. The Earth passes this intersection every year on the 12th of August. But the comet's next return is forecast for the 14th of August, 2126. As every year, the Earth will be passing this crossroad on the 12th of August, two days before the comet. If the comet arrives on time on the 14th, all well and good will have gone past before the comet comes. But if it's one or two days early, your great-great-grandchildren may be in for a close shave. At the next full moon, watch how it rises in the east when the sun sets in the west. One or two hours after the sun sets, the full moon is so bright that nothing is visible around it. Except Jupiter, 
the largest planet in our system. Jupiter's bright enough to be seen even when it moves into conjunction with the full moon. Although these two bodies appear side by side, don't forget that Jupiter is 1,500 times farther away. Conjunctions like this give us a clear picture of the steps in the planet's ballet. The Earth travels on its orbit 12 times faster than Jupiter. For a complete revolution around the Sun, the Earth takes one year, while Jupiter takes 12 years. Little by little, the Earth catches up with Jupiter and slips between Jupiter and the Sun. In this position, Jupiter faces the Sun in opposition. Seen from the Earth, Jupiter is on the opposite side from the Sun. Let's see all that again with the Moon, which turns around the Earth once a month. When it reaches the Earth-Jupiter line, it's in conjunction with Jupiter. And you can see the pair crossing the sky side by side. 